Robert Giscard, c. 1015–17 July 1085, was a Norman adventurer remembered for the conquest of southern Italy and Sicily. Robert was born into the Hauteville family in Normandy, went on to become Count of Apulia and Calabria 1057–1059, and then Duke of Apulia and Calabria and Duke of Sicily 1059–1085, and briefly Prince of Benevento 1078–1081, before returning the title to the Pope. His sobriquet, in contemporary Latin Viscardus and Old French Viscart, is often rendered the resourceful, the cunning, the wily, the fox, or the weasel. In Italian sources he is often Roberto il Giscardo or Roberto d'Altavilla from Robert de Hauteville. Background from 999 to 1042 the Normans in Italy, coming first as pilgrims, were mainly mercenaries serving at various times the Byzantines and a number of Lombard nobles. The first of the independent Norman lords was Reinulf Drengo who established himself in the fortress of Aversa becoming Count of Aversa and Duke of Gita. In 1038 there arrived William Iron Arm and Drogo, the two eldest sons of Tancred of Hauteville, a petty noble of the Cotentin in Normandy. The two joined in the revolt of the Lombards against Byzantine control of Apulia. By 1040 the Byzantines had lost most of that province. In 1042 Melfi was chosen as the Norman capital, and in September of that year the Normans elected as their count William Iron Arm, who was succeeded in turn by his brothers Drogo, comes Normanorum Totius Apulia e Calabriae, the count of all Normans in Apulia and Calabria, and Humphrey, who arrived about 1044. Early years Robert Giscard was the sixth son of Tancred of Hauteville and eldest by his second wife Frisenda. According to the Byzantine historian Anna Comnena, he left Normandy with only five mounted riders and thirty followers on foot. Upon arriving in Langobardia in 1047, he became the chief of a roving robber band. Anna Comnena also leaves a physical description of Giscard. This Robert was Norman by birth, of obscure origins, with an overbearing character and a thoroughly villainous mind. He was a brave fighter, very cunning in his assaults on the wealth and power of great men, in achieving his aims absolutely inexorable, diverting criticism by incontrovertible argument. He was a man of immense stature, surpassing even the biggest men. He had a ruddy complexion, fair hair, broad shoulders, eyes that all but shot out sparks of fire. In a well-built man one looks for breadth here and slimness there, in him all was admirably well-proportioned and elegant. Homer remarked of Achilles that when he shouted his hearers had the impression of a multitude in uproar, but Robert's bellow, so they say, put tens of thousands to flight. Lands were scarce in Apulia at the time and the roving Giscard could not expect any grant from Drogo, then reigning, for Humphrey had just received his own county of Lavello. Giscard soon joined Prince Pandulf IV of Capua in his ceaseless wars with Prince Guimar IV of Salerno 1048. The next year, however, Giscard left Pandulf, according to Amatus of Monte Cassino because Pandulf reneged on a promise of a castle and his daughter's hand. Giscard returned to his brother Drogo and asked to be granted a fief. Drogo, who had just finished campaigning in Calabria, gave Giscard command of the fortress of Scribla. Dissatisfied with this position, Giscard moved to the castle of San Marco Argentano, after which he later named the first Norman castle in Sicily, at the site of ancient Alusium. During his time in Calabria, Giscard married his first wife, Alvarada de Macon, known in Italy as Alvarada of Buonalbergo. She was the daughter of Reginald I, Count of Burgundy, also known as Renaud I de Macon, Reynald I, Baron of Buonalbergo, and Gerard of Buonalbergo, and his wife Alice of Normandy. Giscard soon rose to distinction. The Lombards turned against their erstwhile allies, and Pope Leo IX determined to expel the Norman freebooters. His army was defeated, however, at the Battle of Civitate Sul Fortori in 1053 by the Normans, united under Humphrey. Humphrey commanded the center against the Pope. S. Swabian troops. Early in the battle Count Richard of Aversa, commanding the right van, put the Lombards to flight and chased them down, then returned to help rout the Swabians. Giscard had come all the way from Calabria to command the left. His troops were held in reserve until, seeing Humphrey's forces ineffectually charging the Pope. 
S Center, he called up his father-in-law. S reinforcements and joined the fray, distinguishing himself personally, even being dismounted and remounting again three separate times, according to William of Apulia. Honored for his actions at Civitate, Giscard succeeded Humphrey as Count of Apulia in 1057, over his elder half-brother Geoffrey. In company with Roger, his youngest brother, Giscard carried on the conquest of Apulia and Calabria, while Richard conquered the Principality of Capua. Rule Soon after his succession, probably in 1058, Giscard separated from his wife Alvarada because they were related within the prohibited degrees. Shortly after, he married Sicilgeda, the sister of Gisulf II of Salerno, Guimar's successor. In return for giving him his sister's hand, Gisulf demanded that Giscard destroy two castles of his brother William, Count of the Principate, which had encroached on Gisulf's territory. The reformist papacy, at odds with the Holy Roman Emperor due to the investiture controversy, and the Roman nobility itself, resolved to recognize the Normans and secure them as allies. Therefore, at the Council of Melfi, on 23 August 1059, Pope Nicholas II invested Giscard as Duke of Apulia, Calabria, and Sicily. Giscard, now, by the grace of God and St. Peter Duke of Apulia and Calabria and, if either aid me, future Lord of Sicily agreed to hold his titles and lands by annual rent of the Holy See and to maintain its cause. In the next twenty years he undertook a series of conquests, winning his Sicilian dukedom. Subjugation of Calabria At the time of the opening of the Melfitan Council in June, Giscard had been leading an army in Calabria, the first strong attempt to subjugate that Byzantine province since the campaigns of Iron Arm with Guimar. After attending the synod for his investiture, Giscard returned to Calabria, where his army was besieging Cariati. After his arrival, Cariati submitted and, before winter was out, Rosano and Geraci followed. Only Reggio was left in Byzantine hands when Giscard returned to Apulia. In Apulia, he worked to remove the Byzantine garrisons from Taranto and Brindisi, before, largely in preparation for his planned Sicilian expedition, he returned again to Calabria, where Roger was waiting with siege engines. The fall of Reggio, after a long and arduous siege, and the subsequent capitulation of Scylla, an island citadel to which the Reggian garrison had fled, opened up the way to Sicily. Roger first led a tiny force to attack Messina but was repulsed easily by the Saracen garrison. The large invading force that could have been expected did not materialize, for Giscard was recalled by a new Byzantine army, sent by Constantine X Daucus, ravaging Apulia. In January 1061, Melfi itself was under siege, and Roger II was recalled. But the full weight of Giscard's forces forced the Byzantines to retreat and by May Apulia was calm. Sicilian campaigns Giscard invaded Sicily with his brother Roger, capturing Messina in 1061 with comparable ease. They landed unsighted during the night and surprised the Saracen army. This success gave them control over the Strait of Messina. Giscard immediately fortified Messina and allied himself with Ibn at Timna, one of the rival emirs of Sicily, against Ibn al-Hawas, another emir. The armies of Giscard, his brother, and his Muslim friend marched into central Sicily by way of Rometta, which had remained loyal to al-Timna. They passed through Frazano and the Pianera di Maniaci, where George Maniaques and the first Hautevilles had distinguished themselves 21 years prior. Giscard assaulted the town of Century, but resistance was strong, and he moved on. Paterno fell, and Giscard brought his army to Enna, then Castro Giovanni, a formidable fortress. The Saracens sallied forth and were defeated, but Enna itself did not fall. Giscard turned back, leaving a fortress at San Marco de Lunzio, named after his first stronghold in Calabria. He returned to Apulia with Sicilgeta for Christmas. He returned in 1064, but bypassed Enna making straight for Palermo. His campsite was infested with tarantulas, however, and had to be abandoned. The campaign was unsuccessful, though a later campaign, in 1072, saw Palermo fall, and for the rest of Sicily it was only then a matter of time. As a result of his Sicilian campaign, Giscard was referred to as Black Shirt Robert. Because throughout the campaign he wore elegant clothing with imported dyes that ran together resulting in black clothing. 
against the Byzantines. Bari was reduced in April 1071, and Byzantine forces were finally ousted from southern Italy. The territory around Salerno was already held by Giscard, and in December 1076 he took the city, expelling its Lombard prince Gisulf, whose sister Sicilgeda he had married. The Norman attacks on Benevento, a papal fief, alarmed and angered Pope Gregory VII. Pressured by the Emperor, Henry IV, Gregory VII turned again to the Normans, and at Seprano in June 1080, he reinvested Giscard, securing him also in the southern Abruzzi, while reserving Salerno. In his last enterprise, Giscard mounted an attack on the Byzantine Empire, taking up the cause of Rector, a monk pretending to be Michael VII, who had been deposed in 1078 and to whose son Giscard's daughter had been betrothed. He sailed with 16,000 men, including 1,300 Norman knights, against the empire in May 1081. He defeated Emperor Alexius I Comnenus at the Battle of Duracium in October 1081, and by February 1082 he had occupied Corfu and Durazzo. He was recalled to the aid of Gregory VII, however, who was besieged in Castel San Angelo by Henry IV, in June 1083. Also in 1083, Giscard destroyed the town of Cannae, leaving only the cathedral and bishop's residence. Giscard was ally to Kingdom of Dukla and Constantine Bodin. In 1081 he married his vassal's daughter Jaquinta of Bari to Bodin. In May 1084, Giscard marched north with 36,000 men, entered Rome, and forced Henry to retreat. A rebellion, or seditious tumult emute, of the citizens led to a three-day sack of the city, after which Giscard escorted the Pope to Rome. Giscard's son Bohemond, for a time master of Thessaly, had now lost the Byzantine conquests. Giscard returned with 150 ships to restore them, and he occupied Corfu and Cephalonia with the help of Ragusa and the Dalmatian cities which were under the rule of Demetrius Zvonimir of Croatia. On 17 July 1085, Giscard died of fever at Atheris, north of Lixori, along with 500 Norman knights. He was buried in the Hauteville family mausoleum of the Abbey of the Santissima Trinita at Venosa. The town of Fiscardo on Cephalonia is named after him. Giscard was succeeded by Roger Borsa, his son by Sicilgeta, as Bohemond, his son by an earlier wife Alvarada de Macon, a.k.a. Alvarada of Buonalbergo, was set aside. Giscard left two younger sons, Guy of Hauteville and Robert Scalio, neither of whom made any trouble for their elder brothers. At his death Giscard was Duke of Apulia and Calabria, Prince of Salerno, and suzerain of Sicily. His successes had been due not only to his great qualities but to the Entente with the Papal See. He created and enforced a strong ducal power, which was nevertheless met by many baronial revolts, including one in 1078, when he demanded from the Apulian vassals an aid on the betrothal of his daughter. In conquering such wide territories he had little time to organize them internally. In the history of the Norman Kingdom of Italy, Giscard remains essentially the hero and founder, though his career ended in something of a dead end, while his nephew Roger II was the statesman and organizer. Religion Due to his conquest of Calabria and Sicily, Giscard was instrumental in bringing Latin Christianity to an area that had historically followed the Byzantine rite. Giscard laid the foundation of the Salerno Cathedral and of a Norman monastery at Santupimia in Calabria. This latter monastery, famous for its choir, began as a community of eleven monks from St. Evrul in Normandy under the abbot Robert de Grantmesnil. Although his relationship with the Pope was rocky, Giscard preferred to be on good terms with the papacy, and he made a gesture of abandoning his first wife in response to church law. While the popes were often fearful of his growing power, they preferred the strong and independent hand of a Catholic Norman to the rule of a Byzantine Greek. Giscard received his investment with Sicily at the hands of Pope Nicholas II, who feared the opposition of the Holy Roman Emperor to the papal reforms more. Giscard supported the reforms, coming to the rescue of a besieged Pope Gregory VII, who had once excommunicated him for encroaching on the territory of the Papal States. After the Great Schism of 1054, the polarized religious atmosphere served to strengthen Giscard's alliance with Papal forces, resulting in a formidable Papal-Norman opposition to the Eastern Empire. In literature 
In the Divine Comedy, Dante sees Giscard spirit in the heaven of Mars, along with other warriors of the faith who exemplify the cardinal virtue of fortitude. In the Inferno, Dante describes Giscard's enemies as a field of mutilated shades stretching out to the horizon. Giscard was the protagonist of Kleist's verse drama Robert Guskard, incomplete at the author. S. Death 1811, historical fiction novels covering the early years of the dynasty, from the arrival of the brothers in Italy to the conquest of Sicily, is covered in Jack Ludlow's trilogy Mercenaries, Warriors and Conquest. Marriage and issue Married in 1051 to Alvarada of Buonalbergo, 1032 aft. July 11, 22, and had Bohemond. Emma, b. 1052 or after, married to Odo the Good Marquis married in 1058 or 1059 to Sicilgata and had Matilda, also Mahalta, Maud, or Maud, 1059 aft, 1085, married Ramon Berenger II, Count of Barcelona. Roger Borsa, Duke of Apulia and Calabria Mabel, married to William de Grantmesnil. Gerson, married to Hugh V. of Maine, repudiated. Robert Scalio Guy, Byzantine Sebastos Sibylla, married to Eblis de Ramarupt, 4th Count of Russi and had eight children. Olympias, renamed Helena, betrothed to Constantine Doukas, son of Michael VII in August 1074, contract broken off in 1078. Notes References Von Kleist, Heinrich Robert Guskert, Herzog der Normaner, Student Edition, Stuttgart, 2011. Chalandin, F. Histoire de la Domination Normande en Italie et en Sicile, Paris, 1907. Von Heinemann, El Geschichte der Normannen in Unteritalien, Leipzig, 1894. Loud, G. A. 2000. The Age of Robert Giscard, Southern Italy and the Norman Conquest. ISBN 0-582-04529-0. Norwich, John Julius. The Normans in the South, 1016-1130. Longmans, London, 1967. Chaplin, Danny. Strenuitas, The Life and Times of Robert Giscard and Bohemond of Taranto. Norman power from the Mezzogiorno to Antioch, 1016 to 1111 AD. Singapore, 2015. Rogers, Clifford J. 2010. The Oxford Encyclopedia of Medieval Warfare and Military Technology, Volume 1. Oxford, Oxford University Press. ISBN 978-0195334036. External links. Medieval History Texts in Translation at Leeds University Coin with Giscard's Effigy Colley, Charles, Medieval Lands Project on Robert Giscard, Duke of Apulia, Medieval Lands Database, Foundation for Medieval Genealogy